I'm going to show you how you can add an additional room to your floor plan. So for example, we have this floor plan and it has doors, has some ductwork, has some outlets and some light switches, but we wanna add a room so this door goes to somewhere. There are many different ways to do that. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways. One way is you could get the rectangle tool by pressing R, draw a rectangle inference from here, press M, move this over, hold shift, and lock it to right there. And then I can press F to do the offset command and I could do seven and five eighths inch walls. If I press P, I could pull the walls up and amazing, I have another room and I could cut a hole in the wall right here. So I could select here, press P, cut a hole in the wall. But you can see that this is creating not the most ideal situation. This may be the way your building is, but we have double walls here. So I can move this opening down to the door by using press pull and then locking to this door. So that works fine, but we have extra thickness on our wall. One way you could now correct that is by pressing and pulling right to there and it will remove that wall. And that can be a great way to do it. So now we have our door here and we could continue modeling as is. But sometimes that will now create extra faces. So you can see we kind of have uh, this face on top of each other. So whenever you see in a 3D modeling program, you can see like this face is flickering. That's the two different faces fighting each other to be in front. So this is not the best way to do it. Watch if I delete that face. Now that's gone and it doesn't have that flickering. So we kind of want to avoid that. Let's look at a different way that we could do this. So I'm going to triple click this entity and delete it. If you look at this wall here, it is a group. So what I can do is double click to go inside the group. And then I can go ahead and use my tape measure right here from this side and I can tape over, hold shift and inference from right here. Then I can press L for my line tool, click at that intersection and then go straight down. Now I can press P and I can go out as far as I want. I can type 18 feet and then press enter. I could draw another line here, seven and five eighths inch over. So that's one way to do it. So I'll show you that way and then I'll show you another way. So if I get my tape measure by pressing T and I can type seven and five eighths. And then again, I can draw the line, click here, then click here. Then I can press P. And this time I'm gonna inference to this interior wall. Now that's a perfect way to do it, but I'm gonna show you another way. With the press pull, if I tap Alt or Option, it makes another line. So then I can reference to right here, and then I can click this push pull and reference to here. Then I can take my eraser and erase these lines so they don't have that extra geometry. So now this wall is all connected in that group. I can also erase these side lines if I so choose. So you can see right here, this is on the same face, so I can erase that line if I want, or I could leave it there. And now I have two rooms. Here's one more extra piece of geometry we can clean up. And then if I click outside of that, I have a second room. What I don't have is a floor. So to add a floor, I could do two things. If the floor is the same, I could double click on this floor, click this line right here, press M to move it, press X to go this direction and show the model, and then I could snap to there. So now that's all one single plane. That's a perfectly fine way to make the floor. Another way I can make the floor, I will undo that, is if I want it to be a different group, for example, maybe there's different floor coverings, I could just draw a rectangle in this room. So I can press R, select that point, then I can orbit around and 
draw my rectangle over to that point. Now the problem with this is now I don't have any floor underneath this door, but that's okay. I can click this line, press M, and then I'm going to move over on the red axis, hold shift and inference to this door here. Then I'll double click that, press command or control G to make a group. And now I have two floor panels. Then I can edit and delete my guides. And now I've made another room in two different ways. We can continue building off of this, add more floors and all kinds of detail for whatever your particular floor plan and model requires. SketchUp is very versatile and can quickly draw these architectural forms and make edits and permutations. Don't forget that you can highlight everything, press M, then tap Option or Alt when you're moving and make another one. So what this allows you to do is to have iteration. So I can press this and move my wall in, then click this one, move my wall in, and then I can move my floor. So if I want to have my floor here, I can move the floor in as well. And here we have, there's some extra geometry here, so we can just double click and then we can just erase that out of the way. So now we have two different versions of our floor plan. So this is a great way to keep making iterations and ideations of our floor plan so you can see many of them all at the same time. So I highly recommend doing that. So hopefully this allows you to add additional rooms to your floor plan in SketchUp and you have happy 3D modeling.